I'm James Cridden, as you've just heard. I'm also the publisher of a, a news website for podcasting, podnews.net. I produce a very short newsletter once a day with links to news all over the world around podcasting and uh, on demand. It's free. You should get it. So to tell you a little bit about who I am, during my time at uh, Virgin Radio in London, I launched the world's first smartphone app for mobile phones and also launched uh, the first uh, daily podcast for a radio station back in March 2005. We invented something called podvertising. Sorry about that. I now work for all kinds of people, and I live in Brisbane because London is so last century. So the podcast world has certainly changed, uh, I think, in the last uh, 12 months uh, since we were last here together. But then quite a lot's changed, of course, hasn't it? This time last year, a Google Home was just a place where Larry Page went in the evening to have a meal. Donald Trump was just a reality TV star with bad hair and thankfully no access to nuclear missiles. Uh, and S-Town was just the way that people in Melbourne talked about Sydney. <laughs> but much has changed, so I've been asked to set the scene for the rest of the day and to look at the numbers, and I'd like to spot some opportunities for podcasters as the industry grows. I've got some trends from data, maybe, that might help us, and I will show a few graphs uh, to get there, so hello to you if you're listening on the radio. And I guess, since I am an Australian taxpayer now, um, I guess I actually own part of this big screen. So the first thing I'll do is show you some holiday photographs. This is me uh, in Dublin 10 years ago. I visited the Guinness Brewery, which was very nice. Here I am in a bar in Tokyo in Japan, uh, some very good Japanese beer. Um, here I am in Vancouver. I do a lot of work in Vancouver. I work for a radio station uh, company there. Um, uh, this is a local brew. Uh, it's also very good. And uh, here I am in uh, South Korea. Uh, so, anyway, let's see if we've got some podcast statistics that are worth uh, raising uh, a glass to. This time last year, there wasn't very much data around um, Australian podcasting, so we had to make do with research from the US uh, and uh, the UK. This year, though, that's changed, and I'm very grateful not just to companies like Omni Studio and Pocket Casts and the ABC for sharing their internal data with me. I'm also grateful to companies like Edison Research and Commercial Radio Australia and many others who've all invested time uh, and energy and money into some of the research that I'm going to show uh, to you today. So let's start with some big numbers. Uh, these are from ABC Internal Research. Uh, they're released for the first time today, and it's research which is nationally representative. Uh, I'll share some other ABC uh, survey uh, data uh, as well shortly. 89% of all Australians know what a podcast is. That is a really high number, 89%. And similar data from Edison Research last year also showed that podcast awareness is very high in Australia. 58% of Australians, over half, have listened to a podcast. And if you're young, 25 to 34, that number goes up to 76%. Three quarters of young Australians have listened to a podcast. And 29% of Australians have listened to a podcast in the past month. And this is a really, really strong figure. I'm going to put this into context and say that over the last month, 95% of Australians have listened to the radio, so there's still plenty of room for growth. But 29% is a fantastic figure, and we should be really proud of that. So where are they listening? Well, this is some data from Omni Studio, uh, which I've indexed against Australian population levels as a whole. New South Wales and Victoria are driving podcasting, downloading more than average, while other states and territories appear less keen. Um, for example, in Queensland, if you live in Queensland, you're 29% less likely to download a podcast than the average Australian. But on the bright side, you live in Queensland. Um, <laughs> There's also been some changes here. The ACT last year indexed higher than the average. This year, people in the ACT are slightly less likely to download a podcast than the average Australian. They're probably busy trying to find their birth certificates. But I said last year that focusing on other states and territories uh, was an opportunity for the podcast industry, and I still think that that's true for this year. <laughs> 
Anyway, that's people. So let's have a look at how much time podcasting uh, is taking up. These figures came out late last year from Commercial Radio Australia and GFK. They show the type of audio that we listen to. And when you look at the whole country, already about 4% of our time is spent listening to podcasting. It's a really good figure. And consumption is also very different in terms of age. So this is UK data, and it shows how people consume uh, audio. Young people listening to much more on-demand content than older people. So there's a real difference there, not just in terms of podcasting, but also in things like Spotify uh, and other pieces of on-demand content. And here's some interesting and quite underreported data from the US. This graph shows total time spent listening to radio station streams online. So live radio station streams online. Even though more people are getting internet access and smartphones and everything else, traditional live radio streams via the internet are going down because I suspect that they're finding things like podcasting and other interesting on-demand content to enjoy. So our numbers are good in Australia, but I think there's uh, plenty of room for growth, uh, particularly outside New South Wales and Victoria. We probably shouldn't assume as well that people are comfortable with the technology or find it easy to use. We can still make it much easier. All of us can talk up podcasting an awful lot more. I hear podcasting mentioned an awful lot on RN, but I have to say, if you listen to ABC Radio Brisbane or 4BC, you know, occasionally somebody has to, um, I would challenge you to hear podcasting being mentioned maybe quite as much as it could be. So I think that um, the mass uh, media could do more, and that would benefit the entire sector. But what are people listening to? Well, the good news is people are listening to more. In 2014, the average number of podcasts that users of Pocket Casts had subscribed to was seven. These are my uh, podcasts, by the way. Please don't judge me for the podcast I listen to. Um, in 2017, the amount of uh, podcasts that Pocket Cast uh, users listen to have gone up to 24. So people are clearly listening to more podcasts. Uh, which is really interesting stuff. But of course, a subscription is one thing. Two-thirds of Americans don't actually get the time to listen to everything. So there's always that too. This is uh, brand new uh, research unveiled at Podcast Movement only two weeks ago. Um, what Nuvudu and Amplify also discovered is that most people actually listen to a surprisingly small amount of podcasts. Edison Research has previously said that the average is five, and you can see that, yeah, the average probably is five. You can also see that 50% of people are only listening to two or three podcasts. And when asked how much of a podcast people listen to, 47%, less than half, say that they always listen to the full length of a podcast. Podcasting like radio is a multitasking medium that you can enjoy while you're doing something else. So it's probably to be expected that when people finish the task they were doing, like driving or gardening, then they stop the podcast. That's why 30% of people stop listening. And 23% of people stop when they get tired or bored. Unless, of course, it's my podcast, in which case that seems to be about 95%. <laughs> However, if the content's good enough people will come back. Uh, the ABC's podcast survey has found that about a third of active podcast listeners will pause a podcast and will continue playing to it later. And it's this stat that I find really interesting. Based on actual consumption from actual people using actual data, Pocket Cast says that if a podcast is an hour long, less than 50% of people make it past 15 minutes. But, importantly, those that do will listen to the end, which is really interesting, I think. Earning that commitment is really hard, but once you've earned that commitment, people will stick with a podcast. So from this lot, perhaps we need to be better marketers of our own podcasts. If most people listen to only five or less podcasts a week, then we need to be really clear why our podcast deserves to be in their five podcasts that they listen to.
And we also need to be a bit better at keeping our audience when they've hit the play button. So two tips from the radio industry that I think are really good for podcasting. Firstly, it's something that radio people call the reset. So every presenter break or every episode, when you listen to Steve Austin on ABC Radio Brisbane, he's very good at this. He reminds you who he is. He reminds you who he's interviewing in the middle of an interview. So that if you join halfway through, you know and you understand what's going on. And in the same way, no one is going to go back to episode one to find out who you are and what your podcast is about. So make sure that's really clear at the top of every podcast. And then you really do need also to promote ahead. So if you're going to record an interview, don't do that without recording an intro to it afterwards. You know, in this podcast, uh, my guest tells me what the best beer from Queensland is uh, and what Forex actually stands for. You won't believe it, keep listening, that kind of thing. Radio people have been doing this for years and I think we can steal the best ideas from them because after all, we are all audio producers. Now, all of this research will be obviously uh, pointless in only a few months because Apple, see what I did there, <laughs> will be bringing out a bunch of data for podcasters. Here's what it's going to look like. You can see total plays, not downloads, but plays. Uh, this shows a comparison between different episodes. If you're a user of Omni Studio, this may look quite familiar. You'll also see how long that they stuck with your podcast and where they skipped. I suspect that there might have been two commercial breaks in this podcast. And you also know where your subscribers listen to uh, and all of that stuff. And this stuff is going to be really, really interesting. Now, it'll only be on Apple devices, not everything. It'll only be podcasts consumed through the Apple app as well. But even so, that's a really good step in the right direction. Uh, one concern is whether it or not it'll change the audio that people make to drive podcast clickbait. And another concern is, is that a bad thing? I don't know. But what we don't actually have yet is an actual chart showing the most popular podcasts. So let me show you two charts. Firstly, I mentioned Pocket Casts earlier. Uh, it's available on iPhones, but also on Android phones and the web. So it might be interesting to know the most subscribed podcasts in Australia. Now, these aren't downloads, these aren't listens, these aren't plays, they're just subscriptions. Here are the most popular subscriptions to podcasts in Australia. Now, there's two interesting things there. First, Serial is number one. But there hasn't been an episode of Serial at all this year. So the good news for us, I think, is once you subscribe, you tend to leave that subscription there. And that's really good news for podcasters who, at the moment, aren't taking breaks, who aren't breaking their podcasts up into series. You can do that because people don't unsubscribe when they stop getting a podcast, which is really good news. Secondly... There isn't an Australian podcast in this top 10, which is interesting. If you're looking for an Australian podcast, as I know you are, we can probably claim number 11. Um, at least it was ours. It's now Gimlet's. But the top Australian podcast subscribed to in Pocket Casts is number 14, Dr. Carl on Triple J. Surprise. Now, this looks a little odd, but then this is subscriptions, not downloads. And, of course, this is also a very different list to the list that we're used to. Here's the list that we're used to, the iTunes chart. And this is the iTunes chart as of Wednesday. And this shows the top podcasts. And this is much more what we're used to. Some really good Australian content in here. Richard Feidler at number five. Congratulations, Richard Feidler. The number one, when I looked, was unspeakable. Now, that has one episode. It's from the Victoria Police. It has one episode. I'm sure it's a brilliant podcast, <laughs> right? I, I genuinely am. No, I am sure it's a great podcast, but I'm also sure, very sure, that it isn't as popular as Conversations. So I think we should just bear in mind that, well, I've written an article on this, and hopefully this highlights that, that the iTunes chart is not a chart. It's just an indicator of new subscribers. What Apple have done here is they've built this chart to reflect trends, and to surface new and interesting podcasts. And that's brilliant. And it's a real achievement to get into the iTunes chart. But the iTunes chart is not a chart of total downloads or subscriptions or anything else, just so that we know.
few more things on stats. The iTunes front page features, interestingly, don't appear to have as massive an effect as you would expect. This edition of Pod News links to somebody who got that big feature and did lots of data off the back of that. He says that it gave him a 5% extra download figure. We could all do with 5% more downloads. That would be a wonderful thing. But I think that's interesting. So if you're really pushing for that iTunes feature, it's a good thing, but also push for other things as well. I guess people here are probably interested in learning how they're doing in comparison to everybody else, because we still don't have that chart, of course. So the big shows from podcast networks get millions of downloads. Um, as you would expect. So This American Life, the network, gets a total of 22 million downloads per month to their three shows. How many people are doing 22 million downloads in this room? No? Okay. They actually, uh, Serial is one of theirs, S-Town is one of theirs, so they obviously aren't releasing any new um, episodes at the moment. So I'm suspecting that This American Life probably does 4 million downloads from every episode. Anybody doing 4 million downloads? Okay. Um, But as you can probably see already, the average download for a typical podcast episode hosted on Libsyn is 150. Is anybody doing more than 150? Excellent. There you go. You're better than the average. This is a good thing. If you want to consider yourself as a very big Australian podcast, you should be looking at something like 100,000 downloads per episode. That's what I'm seeing from some of the large podcasts here. But when and where are people listening? Well, we already know that mobile devices are the thing. Omni Studio gave me these stats last year and have updated them for this year. It is all listening on a mobile uh, device. Interestingly, use of tablets has doubled over the last year. Don't know why, but I just thought that that was interesting. We might listen on our mobiles, but we're not listening while mobile, we're listening at home. And both the ABC survey and US data from Edison Research shows the same kind of thing. They also, by the way, both show over the last year an increase in in in-car listening as people are getting more used to Bluetooth in their car and plugging their car into the uh, dashboard and everything else, which is interesting. The ABC also reports that podcasting is uh, popular while exercising and while falling asleep. Again, we're back to my own podcast. And the ABC uh, tells us that listening peaks towards the end of the day when you look at weekdays. And I think this is, this is interesting because actually, again, this is very similar to on-demand behavior that we've all seen in a while for um, audio and for video. Typically, people want to connect with the world in the morning, so they'll use the radio to do that. Then they withdraw into themselves at the end of the day, so music and podcasting uh, goes up. Uh, Podcasting is less popular over the weekend, and the most popular time for podcasting over the weekend is in the early afternoon, after lunch. And finally, when we talk about uh, podcasting and subscribing and downloads and all of that, That's not really how people are using podcasting, it turns out. Here are two pieces of data from the US. The one on the left says that about 58% of people want to listen immediately uh, at at most times. And on the right, well, that one says much the same. Edison, who asked the data for the right-hand side, also asked about subscribing. And it's interesting how small the figures are for subscriptions and how much people actually say that they just want to click and listen. So maybe one takeaway from that might be to ensure that you have an embedded player on your website so that you can click to listen on there. Omni Studio tell me that a third of their podcasts are listened to on one of their clients' websites using their embedded player. So if somebody wants to click and listen, fine. You know, why not let them? And we might want to consider our language of subscribing and downloading podcasts. We're just playing them, surely. Maybe we can make it a little bit easier. Now, talk to radio people, and they will give you an epiphany about the smart speaker. Uh, On the left, the Apple HomePod, uh, here for Christmas, probably around 500 Aussie dollars. Uh, HomePod will interface directly with Apple Podcasts and will let you ask Siri to play your favorites. Uh, On the right is the Amazon Echo. We'll probably get this when we get Amazon here in the UK, whenever that might be. That too plays podcasts. Uh, The way you get onto this device is through TuneIn. 
Uh, so do a quick Google search to find out how to get your podcast listed in TuneIn if it isn't already there, and you will already then be in the Amazon Echo. And in the middle, the Google Home, which is available now for $199 from places like Harvey Norman and JB Hi-Fi, or for 37,250 Qantas points if you spend all of your life in the air. Now, this has podcasts as well, as does the Google Assistant on newer Android phones, as I will show you. But nobody's quite sure how to get your podcasts onto these devices. They just kind of happen. And it's a really weird thing. If you ever find out how they actually get there, I would love to know. So, smart speakers, are they a thing? Well, at first glance, yes, they are a thing. People who own them are listening to more audio. For 20% of people, they are their primary audio device. Uh, this is data from both the US and the UK. Almost all of them are in a shared space, which means more listeners. And they're popular as well. Almost half of people with one want to buy another. So in the US, they've done a bunch of research on what people use smart speakers for. Uh, and this is the exciting research that they've ended up doing. Play music is at the top and get the weather and listen to the radio in various forms. And oh, there's podcasting. All the way down there, it's about 12%, uh, I think. So yeah, let's take a look at some other research. This is research uh, from the UK. And they have discovered that live radio does really well on these devices. On-demand music, yeah, that's good. And podcasting, oh. So, smart speakers, are they a thing? No. <laughs> um, I wonder whether this is because we haven't told people that podcasts are there, or maybe people don't want to have a listen to a podcast when there are other people in the room, or maybe it's too hard to ask for a podcast on one of these devices, or... Maybe we should care anyway. And as a byproduct of all of this, by the way, podcasting is built into every single uh, recent Android phone. It has been actually for over a year, I discover. If you just ask your phone to play Hamish and Andy using the Google Assistant or a more ABC appropriate piece of talent, uh, if you just do that, it will. It will just play it, and it remembers where you got to in the podcasts, and uh, it's a very neat thing, and you can add it to your home screen and everything else. It's just a shame that Google hasn't actually told anybody. Still, finally, where are we in terms of advertising on all of this? Some great speakers later in the day talking about monetization. Here's what I've spotted, particularly coming out of the US. Nielsen, the big uh, audience research company, is taking this very seriously there. Uh, they've looked at all kinds of things. This is their big figure. 50% of US households listen to podcasting. And this is important because people in households talk to each other about brands they want to buy. They've worked out that podcast listeners are more likely to buy things like bottled water. They're more likely to buy baby food. And podcast listeners, uh, any guesses for another one? Beer. There's a theme in this presentation. You may have spotted it. Um, so advertisers are taking note as well. They're talking more about podcast advertising now. They're considering podcast advertising more. They're advertising in podcasts more, or they're planning to more. And this is all good news for podcasting. And even more good news, podcasting appears to be effective in terms of a place to advertise. 56% of Americans say that they pay more attention to the ads in podcasts as well. So my final thoughts here... Don't forget about Android. It's got 80% of the market share of uh, mobile phones. It's a massive opportunity, so make it really easy on your website to listen to your podcast on Android. You would be really surprised how many people don't link to a single place other than iTunes. If I click on an iTunes link on my Android phone, it doesn't do anything. So please fix that. Second, look, this is the Australian Podcasting Conference, and I don't want to go all Anastasia Palaszczuk on you, but we should probably be supporting Australian businesses as well. Pocket Casts works on Android phones, as well as iOS, as well as the web. They give you a lovely little page for your podcast, which contains links to, to subscribe to, to other apps as well. It's built in Adelaide. My suggestion to all of us here is, if you link to iTunes on your website, also linked to Pocket Casts. That will keep me happy in terms of my Android phone, and I think it's the Australian thing to do as well. 
But from all of this data, there's no doubt that podcasting is growing. The ABC podcast survey says that it's growing faster than ever. And that should make our listeners and us smile about the future of podcasting. And I'll drink to that. If you have questions, I'm around all day. And thank you so much for your time this morning. Thank you. Thank you.